guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I am Steph Barron, owner of Lady Lux Hair Salon and ladylux.co.uk and today I have got a very much overdue video because I haven't posted in ages but this is my first video of 2022 and I'm hoping to post so many more because it is one of my goals that I have set myself so be prepared to see a lot more of me but today is a video where I'm going to be colouring my roots. And I mean, oh God, look at these roots. They're absolutely horrific. I have been walking around into 2021, into 2022 with hair like this, which is absolutely embarrassing to be a hairdresser, to be honest. Um, it is, yeah, so bad. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be doing a money piece and I'm just gonna be doing some scattered foils. It is literally gonna be a T line. I'm not gonna be um, doing all like under here and at the back i am trying to get my hair to grow if you've been watching my channel you will see how how much of my hair has actually grown and how long and thick it is compared to my old videos so yeah i am just going to be keeping the coloring to the t lane area so if you want to see how i color my hair then please stay tuned so i'm just going to give you a close-up of my hair this is my hair from the side and this is my roots from the top as you can see they are so dark so we're going to brighten them all up and these are the items i'm going to be using today which is wella blonder i'm going to be using nine percent developer i'm going to be using frammer foils we're going to be using red kin color and we're also going to be using these cute frammer bowls we're also going to need some claw clips and I'm going to be using a tail comb. I love this tail comb because it's super long as well. So it's great for sectioning. We're also going to be using Redken Shades EQ for my root melt and for my toner. So we're going to be starting off with the bleach. I am just going to be using a scoop, which is roughly about 30 grams. I forgot scales. So one of these scoops is roughly 30 grams. So we're going to guesstimate with that. And I'm also going to guesstimate with my pouring, but I would always recommend weighing your bleach so you know for sure what you're mixing up. Now, I like the bleach to have a sort of thicker consistency as I do think it penetrates into the hair much better and i just think it stops it from bleeding and things so i'm also going to be using olaplex in today's color as well to just make sure my hair is kept in the best condition as possible so this is obviously my hair it is actually so greasy and so unstyled but i am going to be doing my money piece and some scattered foils to just blend it i'm then going to be toning it and i'm then going to be showing you the final results so let's get started so i've now mixed up my bleach so i'm going to be starting to apply that i am going to be starting off with the money piece first so let's get going so i'm going to be starting off by brushing my hair i am using a comb which i have no idea why i'm using a comb when i should have been using something like a wet brush or a detangler um but anyway always brush your hair First, to make sure all knots and tangles are out. I'm then going to be starting off with my money piece. So the money piece, we do need to pay attention to the smallest hairline details. So this is why here my first section is literally going to be the baby hairs in the front of my head. Now, I want my money piece to be slightly more bold than I have done previously. So I am going to be slicing it, which is why I'm taking really fine sections and I'm just going to be slicing the hair as in I'm not going to be weaving it I am just going to take this full section and paint the full section so we obviously need to make sure that the bleach penetrates right through the hair and lifts it up as even as possible. The reason I'm taking smaller finer sections is because if I take too much hair it will lift really uneven and it will be really orange and we don't want that. So yeah, basically with this one as well, I half the foil in half just so that it was much smaller at the front of my hair just because the foil is so tiny and the section is so small. So again, I'm going to be taking my second foil and I'm just taking a fine section. And again, I'm not going to be weaving it. I am just going to slice it again and paint the bleach directly on to the section. I'm making sure that I'm going to be getting my foil right in at my scalp so that I can get as much coverage as possible. 
I'm then going to be covering the hair with the bleach. I am using 9% developer so that I can get a, a good lift because my hair is very, very dark. So it's really important that I don't get it on the blonde hair that I already have as it will potentially snap because that hair is really fragile. So I am now moving on to my third foil, which again is just going to be a smaller, finer section. Again, if you don't get your clean section the first time you do it, just do it a couple of times so that you can get it pretty straight. You obviously want to make sure you don't take too much hair as well. This is really key when it comes to doing a money piece. You want to have it really clean and bright and lifted, but you need to be able to lift that with smaller, finer sections. So again, for these first three foils, I have just done a slice. I've not done any weaving. In the past, I have done weaving for my money pieces, which just tends to make them much more blended. But this time I am going for a much bolder and more prominent money piece. Sorry, I was finding it really difficult to see where I was applying the bleach as I was getting further back. So I am just looking in a mirror just now, which is why I look very strange. <laughs> So I'm now moving on to my fourth section. It is entirely up to yourself how many foils you want to do. In order for me to get a sort of medium sized money piece, I usually do five foils, but it is entirely up to you. If you want to have a thicker, bolder money piece, you would just take more sections back. Or if you want to have less, you could just do three or four potentially in the hairline. So for this fourth section, again, I have taken a slice so that I am not leaving out any weaves and so that we can have a full blonde coverage in that section. I'm making sure I am fully saturating the hair in bleach, avoiding the previously blonde bleached hair as we don't want to cause overlap and co cause potential breakage. Also, it must be noted when I am folding my foils up, I am making sure that the end of my blonde hair is coming at the end. I am not overlapping the blonde hair because if my foil does overlap with the hair inside the foil, it will just continue to develop anyway because it'll be pressed against the bleach. So that is a major tip for when you're sealing and closing your foils to make sure that you don't have the ends of your blonde hair on top of the bleach that you've already just put in the foil. So I am now taking my fifth section and this time I am going to do more of a weave just so that I can have this blending in to the rest of my hair and make it much more subtle and more of a nicer transition. I just feel like doing a weave on the last one does make all the difference for blending purposes. Some people prefer to have a really bold prominent money piece but I just prefer to have it a little bit more subtle so yeah I'm going to be doing my weave here. You can see here I've not taken a huge section, it is much more of like a weave sort of baby lights just to be able to get the hair nice and blended as it transitions from the end of the money piece into the back of my hair. So now my first side is completed. I'm now going to do the exact same 
on the other side of my hairline again i'm going to be concentrating on the fine baby hairs at the front i did find this a lot more difficult to do because i was looking in the mirror and using the camera as a mirror but we'll hopefully get there so again i am cutting my foil in half just so that i can use the smaller foil right in the hairline to make sure that i get a really small close-up section and don't have foil hanging all over the place so i'm now going to move on to my second foil on the opposite side again i want to make sure that it's really fine and again concentrating on the baby hairs and this is again going to be a slice to be honest this section was a little bit off which i didn't actually notice so always make sure that your section is fully straight along because i'm not able to get that foil up as tight because it's a bit more ski with As I am going to be applying a root melt, I'm not too worried about the hair at the back of that section. In an ideal world, I would have made the section completely straight across, but obviously because I took a little bit more hair from there, it won't go up as much, but I am going to be putting the root melt on, which will just help it blend. So that's fine. But again, if you can get your section really straight and really clean, then I would 100% do that every time. Again, I have taken another slice section and I'm applying the bleach directly onto my dark area which I want to lift, making sure that it's as close up to the root as possible and not on the blonde hair. I'm now taking my fourth section where again I am going to be doing another slice it's always important when you're doing the money piece that you make sure that your sections are even and that you do the same number on both sides, especially if it is a middle part and as you want it to be even, that your parting will be in the middle and that the hair will be even on both sides. As it is a dark root that I've got and a pretty large regrowth, I am making sure that I am fully saturating the bleach all on the dark area so that I can get as much lift as possible. Now my fifth section of my money piece again is going to be a weave and here you can see me doing the weave on the last section. I do just find this really softens the blend. You can weave the full money piece if you want the full face framing to be much much more blended but I just feel that doing slices and then doing the money piece at uh, doing the weave at the back just softens but yet makes it really bright and pop. So that is me completed the money piece. If you did just want to do the money piece, you could leave it now and let it develop for about 40 minutes. I would keep an eye on it because it is 9% developer that I am using. Um, the reason I'm using 9% is because my hair is naturally quite dark. If your hair isn't as dark as that, you don't need to use as dark a developer. But um, I am going to just do a couple other foils just to break up. Um, the blend a little bit more so obviously in the money piece I did just use slicing and slicing only I am going to be using um, small baby lights with a little bit back combing to make it more blended so yeah let's continue on so I'm just going to admit that this was very difficult to film and I really did struggle trying to look in the mirror use the camera as a mirror and take the sections but anyway so just about Three inches down from my part and I took my first section. I did take a larger, chunkier weave so that I can create a lot of definition and a lot of blonde dimension. So here is my section here. Again, I have a really large regrowth. So I am making sure that I am saturating the section in bleach and I'm making sure that I'm only applying the, the bleach to the dark hair and not on the blonde hair. 
I always like to seal my foils to stop any water getting in when you rinse and also to stop the bleach from bleeding out the packets as well. So now I'm going to be taking another section which is basically just on my part and I'm taking again a weave but this time I'm just doing it slightly finer and picking up a little bit more hair so that I can have a lot of blonde. When you've got the dark against the blonde, that's what makes your blonde look really, really bright and makes it pop and just creates a really, really nice dimension. So the balayage technique that I am using is that I am feathering the bleach up into my root so that it will blend and transition really, really nicely from my root into the blonde on the dark and then obviously my really, really blonde ends and again, I am just sealing my foils. So now I have moved on to the opposite side and again I am blending the bleach up into my root, feathering it so that then when it does grow out it is really really seamless and really nicely transitioned so that it won't be a solid line and again I am blending it down into the blonde ends. This side was really difficult to film because I was looking in the mirror and that's why half my head is off the camera all the time. But again, as you can see, I am taking my next weave, again, a little bit chunkier because I do have a little bit more hair on that side. We want to create a lot of pop and a lot of definition. I'm then going to be blending the bleach up into my root and down into the blonde ends, but only just ever so slightly just because there was a little bit of a brass area there as well. So I just wanted to clean that up a little bit. Again, when I'm folding my foils up, I make sure that I leave the bottom end of my hair out to make sure that it doesn't get pressed against the bleach and over processed. So this is me now applied the foils at the front and the foils at the side. I am just going to apply two foils at the back. Um, just so that I can blend that all in. So I'm going to just do one underneath, which is just going to be the sort of rear back section that I've taken. Oh God, it's hard to view. Why are we doing it backwards? Back home a little bit, which just helps with the blending. So the back section of my hair was even more difficult than the sides but again I am using the same technique and I'm using my head as a bit of a blending board which was a little bit easier so that is a really good trick to use if you're doing your hair. I'm then just going to be folding my foils over making sure the ends are kept out and then moving on to my next section. The hardest part with the back of it is being able to actually see where the edge of the bleach is but because I am going to be doing a root melt I am not too worried about it flip that over so bring the last section up so again with this section I am just taking a little bit of a chunkier weave so that I can create the definition in the back of the head area as well I then just backcombed the hair a little bit and then applied the foil so that we can apply the bleach. Again, the same technique, feathering from the middle up into the regrowth and then feathering from the middle down ever so slightly onto the blonde so that you're not, well, not touching the blonde, but just at the very, very edge so that it blends seamlessly. Right. Folding the foils over to make sure that they're closed and keeping the, the heat in. in. Ready to rock and roll, so I'm just going to leave these to develop and then I will take them off and let you see how it's lifted. I might have to take them off in a few different sections just because we did this one first. Then it was this one, then it was this side, this side, this side. Um, just because I am using 9% developable, but we will see how we get on. So let's just sit for about 30, 40 minutes. I'm just going to be checking the foils as I am going. So this is what the foils look like from the front. This is the foils from the side. And this is the foils from the back. So these foils are starting to get ready. I am just going to go and take these ones off just now because these are really light. So I'm going to wash the front ones off and then it'll be these ones and then we will take them all off and tone. So I am back and I have just rinsed all the foils out 
and wash out all the bleach and I have just shampooed my hair. So I have shampooed my hair using Redken Extreme Lens. It's my absolute favourite. These are new bottles that I've just got. So I was using the Redken ABC, which, which is the acidic bonder concentrate which i do love as well but i absolutely love the extreme length so i'm glad to be using that again so i have taken off my foils and to be honest i am pretty happy with them although i don't usually do slices i usually do weaves and i have done the slices at the front so i feel like they are a bit more bold they're a bit more yellow than white than i would be expecting but i did have a huge root and it was dark so it might take a couple of times for me to get it exactly how i want but i am just going to tone it now and i'm going to be putting a root on so i feel how the highlights have been blended at the top they look good this is just a bit bold for me just now which i don't usually go this bold but i am trying out i'm trying something new and seeing how it is so the toner that I am going to be using for my root, which is I'm going to be applying this to about here um, at the top. So I'm going to be applying it at the uh, back area first and then I'm just going to be tapping it at the front. I'm going to be using Redken Shades EQ 6N and 7N, which are my absolute favourites. And then I'm going to be toning the rest of my blonde with 10P. So let's get started. <laughs> toning I am going to just take out my money piece just because this is the area that I want to be the lightest and the brightest and I'm just going to comb all that back again I'm going to just bring these forward And comb this all back. Oh. So I'm now going to take my root and I'm just going to apply it on the top, making my way around. So this is just going to be a slight root melt. I am just applying the root onto maybe about an inch of my hair. So I'm going along my parting and I'm going along the edge of the front money piece and then slightly down at the back. I'm then going to make my way around the edges. This is the Redken Shades EQ 7N that I am going to be using. And this is basically just going to make the hair fully transition from my dark root into the blonde area so i'm just going to slightly comb that to blend that through and then i am just going to go down in horizontal sections where i'm going to be again painting the toner on and applying it on both sides and then taking another section again i would use a generous amount to make sure that all the colour is fully covered and fully saturated into the hair so that you can get a full blend. It is only going to be a shade 7 so it's not going to be too dark and Redken Shades EQ colours they do go quite dark so they can look as if you know the root is going black but please be aware it will not be dark. So many times I've kept it on for you know not a lot enough time and then think oh my god it's gone dark and then when I rinse it off I'm like oh my god definitely could have left that on longer. So I am now going to do the back section. I am just painting it on. Can't really see what I'm doing but just hoping for the best as I know it's my root. I'm then just going to split it in two and then again apply it on both sides the top and the bottom to make sure that it's really blended and again on the top. So now that so I've applied I've the root all onto all the back area, area I am now going to do tapping. more of a root tap yes, than a root melt on my blonde money piece as I want the, the blonde money piece to still be really bright and really pop but I do want it to be nice and transitioned. I don't like to have my money piece really really bright and bold. I like it to be pop but I like it to be really blended at my root. 
So I'm just taking the hair in section by section and just root tapping on the gel, the Redken Shades EQ. I'm only probably doing it a couple of centimetres this time to just make sure that it's nice and blended. It's also really important that you don't get the blonde hair onto the toner that's already at the back just because that will potentially cause patchiness or just smudge your root melt onto the blonde which you don't want to do. So it's always good to either clip the hair out of the way or just keep it out of the way um, when you're applying it. It's always a good idea to just take really small sections as well just so that you can be really precise when you're applying the toner as it is just a slight root tap and you don't want to create a huge big root drag. So just being really fine and really delicate with your sections is key to the perfect root tap. I'm then just going to be finishing off the, the root tap with my hairline just to make sure that it all fully blends. That is now the root tap on which already it is making such a bit, big difference and looks so much better. So I've gone ahead and mixed up my Redken Shades EQ 10P toner already. I know I should have gloves on when I'm doing this. I know. I know the comments are going to be, she's not got gloves on, she doesn't have gloves on. Okay, yeah. I don't have any gloves on and don't have any gloves in the house and I need to tone my hair. So I am just going to go ahead at my own risk, fully aware, fully understand that this is chemicals and I'm going to be putting them on my hands and I have got nothing to protect me. But if you have got gloves, please wear gloves at home. I do not recommend doing this without gloves, but I am going to proceed at my own risk. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply the toner to the front of my hair and then just blend it all in right at the bottom that is me applied my toner I'm going to leave this on for 20 minutes and then I'm going to wash and I'm going to dry it but I'm going to show you the results tomorrow because it's now getting quite dark in here and I want you to be able to see the results in the natural light but I feel like already the toning process it's looking so much more blended so much more um like not the yellow that it was a few minutes ago so yeah i am really happy with the results already but i will get you i will let you see the final reveal tomorrow so this is me back with the results of my money piece and my balayage i have also bow dried and styled my hair for um another video how amazing does the color look we've obviously got the dark root from the root melt let me just switch the camera so we have got the dark root from the root melt we've got the popping blonde from the money piece yet we've still got such nice blends from the little highlights and foils that we put in at the side but it is so much brighter, so much cleaner and so much fresher and I absolutely love it. If you want to see how I style this video, I have got another video which I will link below, which is 90s blowout styled hair. But I hope you have liked this hair colouring video and please like and subscribe to my channel for more hair videos. Mm -hmm.